Hello viewers, SuperGT here. I am finally back with an FIA race. A bloody good one, let me tell you. Let me tell you that. Hope you've all been keeping well. All my subscribers, all the new viewers who have never heard of me ever before. But here we are, back at the Red Bull Ring for a Group 3 race in uh, FIA Nations. And uh, we're going to get released first out onto the circuit for qualifying to set our best lap here. And some men just want to watch the world burn. So I'm going to do that right here. Just park it up, let everyone go past and cause absolute anarchy. I could have just gone and done my lap and everyone would have been happy. But, you know, slipstream is a thing and it completely ruins qualifying. Uh, so it's a bit of a mess, as you can see, just up ahead. Cars ghosting out, cars spinning. And that was all caused by me. And uh, lol, all I can just do is lol at the situation, at how stupid it is. But uh, we're going to filter in and now try to set our lap time here. In the Taylor Swift machine, which is OP, uh, the car, as this car, flying off into the explosive barrier. So don't do that. Car off on the grass, we go past. Still the faint whiff of slipstream this video was recorded before the most recent update and the most recent update changed the slipstream from about one and a half seconds back to about three quarters of a second so um, it might be a bit different here than what actually is the current state of the game the things I'm saying in the game so at the moment I am just about still in the slipstream with the car ahead and uh, we're gonna come through the final two corners to try to set a decent lap, a yellow flag, I think someone just bottling it on the exit of turn 10 here. Very difficult final couple of corners at Red Bull Ring. Across the line and we go fourth. Not too bad for our first lap and that is just shy of three tenths away from pole position. We go back into the pit lane and uh, we go back out onto the track. I left it a little bit too long here and uh, most of the pack got ahead because of course you need the slipstream. Uh, you see how much of a gap there is from me to the rest of the pack. I need to catch up by the time we get to the end. And thankfully they were fighting so much that I did catch up. And you can see that here. Well, well within the suck zone. And therefore we have a good chance of trying to improve our qualifying lap. We're in fifth now. Got demoted one position since we set our lap. But that's not too bad. Especially given I haven't really played this game all that much recently. So free turn one absolutely abusing track limits well i'm not really right on the edge of the limit another car off on the grass car ahead with a penalty i think it's basically on the exit of turn one as long as you keep two wheels on the curb it's fine this guy just decides to send himself to the shadow realm forgets what brakes are and he gets well and truly wedged in the barrier um, not my problem i can continue on my lap here still again faint whiffs of slipstream from uh, this Frenchman up ahead. He drifts rather wide. A rather Albon-esque move there. Thankfully for him, he didn't quite fully go off into the Shadow Realm. But we're on a good lap. Not perfect. We were a little bit wide on the exit of Turn 4 there, following the Frenchman. And we've gone purple. Look at that. Purple sector. If we can just bring this one home with an improvement, there is always a chance. Frenchman weaving a little bit. Two corners left to go. Probably two of the hardest corners. Frenchman disappears into thin air. And we are left alone to do the final two corners. A little bit too wide for that, for that final corner, I'd say. We're down into sixth. Across the line. Back to fourth. One and a half tenths away from pole position. Okay, then. Um, I had to exit there. I tried to go again, but I was too far back. And you see, I, I went back down to ninth, um, which is a little bit disappointing given I was in fourth for a lot of that session. But we roll on to the intro. Up. 
Thank you so much to Matt Gallagher for that beautiful rendition of Bring Me Back to Life. But here we are on the grid, ninth place. You can see here, it was actually very close, less than two tenths away from pole position. And here I am languishing in ninth. But um, positive side is we have the Taylor Swift livery, as you can see, which must be worth. It's basically basically like having DRS or, or DAS on your car. It's that much of an advantage. Uh, so there's no doubt that we're going to fly through the pack here and, and win this one. You, you just can't fail. You know, you can't lose when you have Taylor Swift on your car. So here we go then. 19 laps around Red Bull Ring, Group 3 cars. And I say Group 3, pretty much everyone's in the Aston Martin. Um, there are a couple of different cars. I think someone went for a Ferrari, but they qualified last. Big F, Plan F for the Ferrari, which is kind of reminiscent of real life. Coming up into turn three, late on the brakes, and as it turns out, too late on the brakes. Go a little bit wide, we're gonna run off wide and come back on behind the Spaniard once again. A little bit ambitious. I need to realign my driving skills once again. It has been a while since I've been you know, driving on the edge on this game. The brakes really early and it's got the inside. Okay then, I'll take it, thank you. Up into eighth, that's one position. Swiss guy here, drifting all over the place. Goes to the right hand side, we're going to go up his inside and uh, take seventh. And that is going to, well, he's going to fight it, he's going to try it, but um, yeah, he's just going to get shown wide and therefore has to back out. I'm up into seventh. We've gained two positions. At this rate, I'll be in the lead in just a couple of laps' time. See, I did tell you. What did I tell you about the Taylor Swift livery? It's so OP. It's the one simple trick that you can use to get unbelievable speed on Grand Turismo Sport. Okay, final corner, running out wide, of course just keeping two wheels on the red and white curve and then did good, across the line to end lap number one. It's a fairly long race, 19 laps and uh, each lap taking about one and a half minutes. We're looking at a half an hour race pretty much. In the exit of turn one, again running the curb on the exit, going no wider than the big sausage, the big yellow sausage. It's a rather noticeable landmark here, and uh, you don't want to go beyond the big yellow sausage. And just look how close it is up here uh, at the front of the pack. Um, the leader really isn't getting away by any means at all, as we take an external shot of the beautiful Taylor Swift. Now coming down into turn four, the downhill braking zone, late on the brakes, almost too late going into the back of the Portuguese driver here but uh, early enough such that we don't. The leader less than two seconds away. This is an interesting one here. Now, I'd imagine the leader, or the pole sitter, should I say, because he's now in second, was uh, opting for hard tires. You can go uh, medium hard, mediums or hards for this race, and you need to use the hard at some point. I've, I've gone with the medium to start with, and then um, we'll go onto the hard tire at some point during the race. Uh, but then, of course, lots of people will be on the hard tyre to begin with and then go on to the medium later. Um, and seeing as the pack is so closely bunched here, I'm guessing someone up here is on the hard tyre, slowing everyone down. I managed to get up the inside here, set the fastest lap, and we're going to go up into the glorious, sick place. Through turn one, look at this, three abreast through the corner. It really is kicking off here. And we're going to do our best to try to follow through TKM Spadders on the right hand side with his Infinity Decals rear wing. We're going to sit underneath it on the braking zone into turn number three. And we've got a car on our inside, in fact. It's really kicking off up into fifth. Then Booby racing wide on the curb. And we're going to get into the slipstream of uh, Spadders there and have the inside. Just look at the radar and <laughs> just look behind. I mean, everyone's queuing up to get past. I'm going to go slide defensive. And, uh, pin it to the apex at one point there, I think four or five people were on the radar and uh, it's, it's beginning to kick off which is actually good good news because if everyone if, if everyone murders each other behind you then uh, you know that's just an absolutely ideal situation in any race and uh, that seems to be happening uh, so we'll let them continue doing that to, to each other uh, meanwhile I'll be turning my attention to uh, going forwards here as um, driver serve penalties behind us and uh, we're just about I think within slipstream range 
or third place is within slipstream range of second, and I'm well and truly within the range of second place, of third place. As uh, we cross the line up into fourth, the Taylor Swift theory is proving to be well and true at this point in time. As we apex turn one on lap number four, still with the fastest lap of the race, and uh, TKM there giving us a nice little indication. I'm not sure exactly what, some sort of communication. Um, you know, drivers do this a lot. They'll give some sort of indication. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly what they mean, um, but it kind of means they want to cooperate with you in some way. Uh, looking behind the gap to fifth now, 1.6. Uh, so they're out of the slipstream range, which is good news. We're not helping them along the circuit. And uh, I'd say that slipstream around this track is at least a couple of tenths. And uh, we're going to move it forward here to the beginning of lap five. The leader with a penalty, the Spaniard. And uh, Spad is here, a little bit slow. And I was confused to begin with because I thought maybe he was on the medium tyre, but I think he's actually on the hard tyre. And that's why he's not quite as quick off the turns, hasn't quite got the traction. He lets me go, he doesn't really fight it at all. So he's probably, he probably knows that I'm on the medium. He's no, he knows that he's on the hard tyre and therefore he can just follow me in the slipstream like he is doing. So right now, he could obviously go for that move down here into turn four. He's right behind me, he could easily have gone for it, but he doesn't. He wants to sit behind, he wants to follow, so I'm happy with that. We'll try and uh, catch up with second. The problem here is that I'm 1.6 away. 1.6, just tiny margins here. If I could have just been one tenth quicker at any point, in this race so far would have been just within the slipstream range but unfortunately at the moment they're just a little bit too far away so I need to put in some really good laps here it's basically a battle between myself and first place at this point for pure pace because of course first place doesn't have slipstream I don't have slipstream the guy in second does but um, I'm just really trying to catch up with the leader at this point because we we're in exactly the same boat with no slipstream um, and therefore it's just a straight up race between the two of us and, and, and that's where I need to try and catch him up in these next couple of laps. We are on lap six, um, not even a third of the way into the race. You can, see that, you can see they're going quite wide on the exit of turn number one. And as we come up into turn two, the gap still two seconds to the leader and we're just beginning to slide through the corners a little bit more now as the tires become more worn. And this was a problem that I was concerned about, the fact that I didn't do a practice race which which normally you have you have to do if you want to compete right at the front on uh, these FIA races you kind of want to do the race at least once to work out uh, what the car feels like to drive on the worn tires what's the best strategy etc etc so I was kind of going in blind here not quite knowing exactly what to do so I was just kind of kind of follow and just do what the other people in front of us did so TKM Spad is beginning just to drop off there almost a second behind He's been caught by Booby Racing and Swiss Golfie. Um, but I've kind of got my own little gap here, you could say. Uh, so the gap, 1.5 to the guy ahead and 2.1 to the leader. So it's it's really close. We're basically very even to within a tenth or two on each lap. I just need that. I just need to go a tenth or two quicker. It really is those fine margins in racing that make all the difference. Uh, so a little bit later, end of lap number seven, coming down through the final corner. This is where problems begin. You can see here, look at that. One pixel beyond the line. And dun, dun, dun. We are served with our first penalty of the race. Not good timing. I was kind of, well, I'm in a good position. I'm in third. That's on the podium. And that's half of sixth. Um, but there, second mistake in two corners consecutive uh, combos coming up here and uh, not good news at all. We've got a one second penalty to serve and we're going to serve that around this corner halfway up the next straight and that couldn't have come at a worse time really because we're coming up to the pit, uh, pit stop strategy time and we've got three cars giving us chase and we were getting quite close to the cars ahead um, but we're going to defend here, two cars go past, we're going to cover the inside, BB Racing is going to swerve to the right, he's going to go for it and it was a committed move, but he couldn't quite break in time. Break a little bit too late, goes wide, I take it back. Back into fifth. So now I have the slipstream of the two guys ahead at least. 
uh, but the problem is just having to drive on the worn tyres, which is not my strength and not something I was used to, not something I've practiced for this race. So we're going to have to try and adjust. You know, it's kind of easy practicing a time trial because you can just uh, you know, practice it on uh, optimum tyres the whole time. But here, a little bit different, have to drive and adjust your driving every lap as your tyres wear out. Um, a little bit wide on the exit here. You can see just in the background there, we'll be racing going into the pit lane perhaps going for the undercut I'd imagine he's on the medium tyres going onto the hards uh, so he's going to get the undercut uh, he, he goes in at the end of lap 8 we're going to continue here onto lap 9 so the lead is now 4.7 seconds ahead and you can see how much of a drop off uh, we've had there we were what 2 seconds behind uh, a few laps ago and now that's increased and it's going to increase even more as we serve this penalty and uh, yeah this these couple of laps here really really not going to plan and this is I think the result of just not having played this game too much recently my pace was good my qualifying lap was, was decent um, but the main mistakes I'm making are just you know just lacks of concentration drifting a little bit too wide past track limits and this is something that's just going to happen when you're not playing the game as much and again we just make another mistake it's just really really silly errors just drifting a little bit too wide on the worn tyres and I was worried now because you can see on the map quite a lot of cars not too far away on the map. So it's going to be really interesting to see where we come out. We're in fourth, eight seconds now away from the lead. So these last, let's say, three laps are really not going to plan. I've perhaps pitted one lap too late as well, but we'll see when uh, we come out of the pit lane. So we're going to box this lap, come in and let the Taylor Swift boys change over the tyres. No fuel to go in. Uh, we can just about do this race without having to uh, without having to get any extra fuel. And uh, looking there, top six, top seven go through, and we're just going to slot in here in eighth place. So you see, look at that gap. We've just dropped massively. We're we're a good three and a half seconds away from that big group up ahead now, we're, which is where we should be. So you can safely say I lost a good three or four, maybe five seconds from all those silly penalties and it was just well I'm not blaming the game it was genuinely my fault I was, I was driving too wide and it's one of those rare occasions where the game you know just actually gets it right and those uh, deserved penalties um, I suppose it's the track limit penalties which are mostly alright it's just the ones for contact which aren't we pushed a little bit wide there and uh, this guy's pushed wide he's done an album uh, Lewis Hamilton around here somewhere pushing people wide um, but the Frenchman goes through, so we gain on one Frenchman, but we lose to this Frenchman here. Um, so we're still in eighth, a net gain of precisely zero on this lap. Um, but I'm okay with this, I'm on the hard tyre now. If this guy has mediums, uh, this Frenchman in front, then you know we can just follow, it, follow him, tuck into the slipstream, and potentially try and catch up with the group in front. It's going to take a while, we do have eight laps remaining, so there's there's still always that chance and uh, should it come to it we'll just whip out a bit of scenario seven and uh, overtake for five seconds coming out of turn eight if we have to coming up into turn one lap 12 clipping the apex nicely as uh, we have the fresh tires now there's taylor swift look at her as uh, we come down the back straight the portuguese guy behind with a penalty quite close behind hopefully won't go for a move because he's going to serve that penalty anyway very close but it doesn't go for it good news a little bit too late on the brakes carrying too much speed in that's going to wear out the tires turning in whilst braking like that um, so not good news just looking ahead tkm spadders up in sixth place with a penalty we are slowly gaining on that group and actually whoa what's kicked off here um, seventh and sixth place uh, these two guys in an incident with each other um, absolutely murdered each other and we can take a look at exactly how that happened here. Uh, so it looked like the Swiss guy just into the back of them, basically. And um, if we scan ahead, he served that penalty, as you can see. So it's all kicked off. And it just shows you, never, never just uh, give up because um, you just never quite know what's going to happen. So all of a sudden, two people get wiped out. Another one has a penalty. And all of a sudden, we have such a good chance of getting well back into the top five. Uh, we're in sixth place, we're back in our natural habitat with uh, seven laps remaining in this race. 
and we're going to try to perhaps go for fourth. I think had I not made all those stupid errors and got all those penalties, I could probably be in third, easily fourth by now, but fighting with spadders for third. Uh, first and second, um, that boat has sailed. I don't think we're going to get first or second now unless they murder each other, which could happen. It, you know, this is Gran Turismo Sport, and uh, I've known I've known weirder things to happen on this game. But for now, we're not going to really worry about that because our immediate problem is trying to catch up and try to overtake and overhaul these two guys. They're going hard at it, as, we, as you can see here, lap 14, coming up into the braking zone of turn three. Frenchman with the cutback, or cut, not really a cutback, it was more of a switch over, if you like. And uh, he runs the Swiss guy out wide and um, puts himself up into fourth. I go up into fifth with an angry Swiss guy right behind, and I'm going to go semi-defensive here, I know I'm on the weaker tyre, and uh, Swiss guy having none of it, so his normal neutrality is uh, turned to a fence there, and he just goes flying through. He's uh, not taking any prisoners today, as uh, he comes through into fifth. The, the Swiss guy here really, he is on one, to put it, to put it mildly. Uh, but now we have the attentions of uh, the Irish guy behind him, the Viper. Interesting choice, uh, brave choice you could say, but he's doing well. He's making he's making that car work, so fair play to him. End of lap 16, and again, the tyres just beginning to drop off now as we enter the final stages of the race and this tyre's life. And boom, we've, we've killed ourselves here with a half second penalty. And um, similar scenes, you know, Vietnam flashbacks to lap number seven and we're going to drop a position here. Half a second penalty isn't too bad. When you get the one second, it really kills you. A half a second, we might be able to just get away with losing one position here. We shall see. So through the apex of turn three, on the exit, trying to get that traction the best we can. We've got a bit of slipstream from the cars ahead. We're going to serve the penalty there. Irishman is definitely going to go through. How about the Portuguese driver? We shall see. I'm going to try and show him to the outside, and he goes to the outside. He tries it. You see him poking in there. It's a brave move. And I'm almost going to send him to the Shadow Realm in the style of Mr. Lewis Hamilton. Um, but he stays just about on the circuit. So now fourth and fifth. You can see them there, just around the corner. I'm not too far away, but we're just beginning to drop off away from those guys. Uh, first, second and third, long way ahead. And uh, I don't think there's much chance of anything there. The race really now is for anything from fourth to possibly 8th and um, it could go either way as now the, the Swiss guy in 4th with a penalty and no doubt his SR is going to be taking a tumble after this one, trying to drift wide there on the exit the final corner, over the line we go to begin the penultimate lap, lap 18 of 19, not long left just two more tours of the Austria Red Bull ring very wide on the exit and there we are, the Swiss guy into the barrier, RIP his race. Sad times for him, but good times for me. Back up into sixth, loving it. And uh, we still have the close attention of the Portuguese guy. He's getting very, very close, um, scarily close. We're gonna defend, we're gonna move to the middle. And he goes to the outside again, very reminiscent of the previous lap. No way round there, my friend. We're gonna have to stay in seventh for now. We still have the benefit of the toe from, a, from, the, from the Irishman. He's going to pull out from the slipstream behind. Is he going to go for this move again? Well, no. I'm going to go defensive to the middle of the circuit. He is going to try it on the outside. It's, it's a brave move. He's gone for the Albon. I'm going to run him wide. Not, again, quite like Hamilton. I'm a bit nicer than Lewis, you know. And uh, we proceed here. Can I, can, I, can, uh, can I keep him at bay for one more lap? Well, one and a half more laps. Uh, that's going to be the main aim here, to finish in 6th place. Let's not for uh, forget that we started ninth, so we are ahead of where we started. So that's positive. We've gone forward. Um, it definitely could have been better. I think 4th place would have been much more realistic had I not made those schoolboy errors, quite frankly, earlier in the race. And uh, just trying to keep the car planted on the exit, but you know we're on the, uh, let's say, ninth lap on these tyres. So they're not really cooperating. He's right behind us now, putting the pressure on hard like Tottenham. Through the apex of turn one, there we go. On the exit, getting on the power as early as we can, and a little bit too early. The car does not want to cooperate. 
and I had to back off the power. I did not want to end up in the explosive wall, which uh, the Swiss guy did a few laps ago, or on the last lap, and um, and spin out and completely lose the race. We still have a chance here. We're in seventh. We live to fight another day. And uh, with uh, Doffra just behind there in eighth place in the uh, Nissan GTR, we have a bit of breathing room to him. Um, but coming down the braking zone into turn four, it's going to be difficult now to try to, to try to overhaul uh, the Portuguese driver here for, for sixth place. And uh, we can whip it forward here and confirm my suspicions that it's going to be too hard. Uh, so as we come down towards the final corner, the only thing we can hope for here is a penalty for the guy ahead. He does drift rather wide there, and I think he must have kept it in track limits by one pixel because he doesn't get a penalty. And we crossed the line in seventh. So it's actually a really good race. You know, I made loads of mistakes, loads of silly mistakes, but still really enjoyed it. It's actually a really fun battle, actually. Could have been a fourth, I think. Should have perhaps been a fourth if I hadn't messed up so many times. Uh, but, you know, that's motor racing. doesn't always go your way, and you have to learn for next time. Uh, so there's uh, classification. Um, the Ferrari actually finishing in 18th, so big F for them. Uh, the highest non-Aston Martin was the Irishman in 5th place in the Viper, so well played to him. We finished in 7th, up 2 positions, 235 points. And a uh, big shout out to the uh, Taylor Swift boys back at the factory for their fantastic work on the car today. And a big shout out to all of you viewers for your fantastic viewing. All of, all of you are legends. So thank you so much. That is going to be all from me today. Thank you so much for watching as always. Thank you for tuning in. And I shall see you in the very near future. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.